You need a five-year plan. I'm gonna help you make one. <laughs> hey y'all, thanks for coming to Kiki with me, Nikki Nick, and today we are talking five-year plans. I feel like if you're anything like me, you're a dreamer, you have these big goals, you're ambitious, or you don't even have to be super ambitious. You may just wanna make some deeper personal changes. You may wanna become a better person. You may have a different future and vision for yourself than what you're living right now. And I feel like all of that is a beautiful thing, but big changes are very difficult without plan, without strategy. And I feel like having some type of plan in place helps take some of the anxiety and some of the stress that comes along with making such deep changes. I feel like I've done a lot of this planning for myself and I feel like these past few years in this ghetto that you call adulting, I've been doing a lot of that like deep personal thought process and that deep inner work to kind of become a better person. I've written my own five-year plan and I wanted to kind of share the methods that I went about writing it. I felt like even if you don't know where to start or you've started, but you may want to see different approaches of how people create theirs, I thought it'd be something useful to share. So without further ado, we're going to get into get it started. <laughs> I feel like there's really a first unofficial step to writing out a five-year plan. And that's actually really taking some time to sit with yourself and to really think and envision what you want for the future and really understand maybe what you're not so crazy about within yourself, things that you might want to change and kind of envisioning the type of person you want to be. And I feel like to do that, I really encourage people to step outside their reality because I feel like this is something I've seen a lot. It really scares me when I see the younger people because I feel like you're so young, like you should be dreaming big. But I see that people they'll see something that's like not within their present reality and they'll just try to write it off and they'll even go as far as to like project onto the person that like oh i'm not doing this so it just must not be possible i really want you to step out and understand that there's so many different realities out there and i feel like with enough work and a bit of luck because let's be real life has its challenges you can accomplish the reality that you really want to accomplish so i really encourage you to do to kind of step outside your boundaries and step outside that box and just to kind of Think a bit bigger because there's actually this saying that I really like. I feel like I feel like if you dream big with a level of grace for yourself, they say that if you shoot for the stars, even if you only make it to the clouds, like you're still in the clouds. So I really want to encourage you guys to kind of step outside of your current boundaries, kind of reflect on who you are right now and kind of think about who you want to be in the future. If you want a copy of this planner to follow along or to like use as a guide later on, you can find the link in the description, but it's not necessary. You can do it completely with paper and a pencil. Now, the first official step to writing this five-year plan is I would suggest to do a free write with just a mild time constraint of a five-year span. Just kind of have in the back of your mind that you kind of want to accomplish this within a five-year period. No deep breakdowns just yet. So you can even kind of categorize certain sections. I know there's like the financial, there's like the wellness, but I feel like everybody's values are different and people want different things for themselves. So if that's not really resonating with you, kind of like pick your core values and maybe start organizing goals within those type of categories. Now the next step is to increase that time constraint and begin breaking down that five year span into your individual year so that one year, two year, three year, four year, five years. And you're gonna take those original goals, those general goals that you just wrote and redistribute them amongst those years. And when you do that, I really want to suggest that you think about the dependencies between different goals. And what I mean by that is, think about how different goals are related and how they work together and kind of intertwine. So for example, let's say you wanna be super healthy or let's say you just want to be healthy and you want to be fit but also say you want to go out a lot more and you want to travel a lot more and when you're kind of thinking about the order of where you want to place these goals you might want to put get fit and get healthy first before you put traveling a lot and going out to social events more and the reason for this is so they say first of all they say gut health is mental health but you know that when you are healthier and when you're a bit more fit you have more energy to do things so it makes a lot more sense to start working towards that goal because it'll directly help you when you want to start traveling more it'll help you with those physical constraints and those kind of mental and emotional constraints that come with that excess socializing and that increased travel another example could be let's say you want to sell 10 properties within a five-year span and you don't really have experience with selling properties it may be better to say you'll try to sell one property in the first year maybe two properties in that second year and then even if you wanted to the remaining seven in that fifth year and it would make more sense to do that versus saying oh, i want to sell those 
selling that first year. I mean, you could if you're really gonna put in that work and grind it out, you could. But I feel like doing it with that one property in the first year, that two property in the second year, you're kind of building that experience, you're kind of building that confidence and that know-how so that you can do that kind of shorter quantity of sales and then know that you have that experience for that fifth year to say like, well, I'll bust out and get those seven sales out in that fifth year. So that's kind of the thought process behind thinking about dependencies when you're kind of ordering out your goals. Now this fourth step is where you start going into more detail and where you start thinking about the actions that are going into these goals from like your individual yearly planning. And I suggest to do this year at a time. Like if you want to, you can bust out the whole five years, but I think it'll be a bit more helpful to do it year at a time because throughout that year, you'll be able to learn so much and life changes, life happens, and you'll be able to take these learnings and apply it to the next year and make that plan a bit better. So I kind of suggest going yearly, but do as you wish, you know, you got it. But I feel like to start off, you should kind of think about what it takes to achieve certain goals. So for example, let's say in one of the years you want to do a career change and you want to think what are the steps I'm gonna have to take to do this. So that might entail, you're gonna have to study a few subjects to be able to kind of be well-versed in this career. You're gonna have to talk to a few people in your career, learn a bit more, reach out. So maybe we can do it like this. You can break it down and say, I want to learn a specific subject each month. And then you can say, I want to reach out to a specific quantity of people per month. And I feel like when you're breaking things down into these months, I feel like you can start off quarterly and then maybe fill in the dots in between those quarters. Or you can even work backwards, starting from that end goal and then working your way back. So maybe you can say, I want to spend like... 12 hours a month doing a studying a specific type of topic and then you can say with each certain month I want to outreach to a specific quantity of people so let's say like month one I want to reach out to at least one person and then by month two I want to be reaching out to three people so on and so forth and that's how you start adding some real kind of I guess KPIs if you want to say to some of these goals and adding some tangible actions that you'll take to be able to achieve these goals. Now you're almost done. The final step is to take these monthly goals and then break them down into weekly and daily habits. Now I choose to do it this way for a few specific reasons. So I feel like you could have like a really deep, detailed, extensive, like daily to-do agenda list, but I feel like that's best to keep it separate. I feel like it can be very helpful, but I think you should keep it separate from this kind of goals. And the few reasons why is one, I feel like it'll keep you focused with a balance of a big like picture and a higher level view of your goals and things you're trying to achieve, but also gives you a bit of balance and a bit of detail and habits. And the second reason why is to achieve a bit of sustainability. Because I feel like we talk about consistency. I feel like consistency is important, but we really also need to know that it can look different throughout the year, throughout a period of time. And I feel like with consistency comes sustainability for within yourself. And what I mean is that we're human and we fluctuate so maybe at your highs you can bust out like a bunch of things here a bunch of things there but at your lows it may not look like that and it's okay as long as you kind of keep some type of consistent habits so like when you break things down into habits you can have that structure there and you can kind of give yourself grace to know that okay i might do it one way this time and even if i'm at a low here i'll still get it done even though it might not look the same if i was at a high so really so if you're thinking back to the career thing we could say like we want to do all the studying we can make a weekly habit that might say that we're gonna study maybe like four hours a week and then we, we might want to break that down into daily habits and know that we'll study one hour Monday, one hour Tuesday, and then maybe two hours on a Sunday and break down into those kind of daily specs. Or we might say as a daily habit that we'll go to the gym and we'll do 30 minutes exercise for that fitness goal that we might have had. And that's how we break it down into those habits. Wow, so you made it to the finish line. You worked on your five-year plan. How do you feel? You feel like your goals are right there? Do they feel a bit more achievable? I really hope so. But seriously, I want to leave off on this kind of final note. And that's pretty much to have grace with yourself. There's a quote that I heard recently that I really it like resonated with me a lot. And that's pretty much that even the most well thought of plan crumbles in the face of the enemy. And that pretty much just means is that life will happen even if you prepare and plan so strenuously things can fall through there can be twists and turns and obstacles it's like great to fall through with that plan but just know that things will happen and to have a level of grace with yourself and just know that you're working hard you're staying disciplined you're trying even if something comes out the woodworks <laughs> here and there just stay focused keep working and have grace with yourself i hope this was helpful let me know in the comments what you think like subscribe and yeah bye <laughs>